Hello, my name is Chaba Degi. I welcome you to the presentation on supporting the role of the caregiver across the cancer continuum. We are going to start with an introduction on the second victims of cancer, and we are going to also talk about the distance caregivers as we experience it during the COVID-19 times. We start by sharing results from the Global Carer Wellbeing Index from 2020, which clearly shows us that an unprecedented impact on informal and unpaid carers around the world is emerging. As a result of the pandemic, one in every five unpaid carers around the world began their responsibilities. They tend to be younger, from the Generation Z or Millennials, and they tend to be parents. Before the pandemic, the average carer offered 16.6 hours of unpaid care a week. That figure rose to 23.4 hours in 2020, and carers expected to grow to 28.3 hours per week in the future as a result of the COVID situation. Because of the time commitment involved as a caregiver, 62% of working carers are worried about losing their jobs. This double career or the double work as a carer and a worker overburdens them. And it's extremely important to take that into account. Moving on, we see that there is an undeniable strain on informal and unpaid carers in the world. As we see during the pandemic, 89% of carers state, they say, that they prioritize the needs of the person they are caring for above their own. Let's remind all of you that caregivers of cancer patients are at an increased risk for isolation and loneliness. Moreover, 76% say that of the carers say that caring for others during the pandemic has made them feel more burned out than they have in the past. It's very important to emphasize that even before the COVID-19 period, burnout among caregivers was widespread. The pandemic has worsened 61% of carers' mental health, mental well-being in general, and women in particular are affected by emotional health issues connected with the pandemic and caring challenges. 58% of caregivers actually say that their mental health suffers as a result of their caregiving duties. The latest results from the Eurocarers survey shows us that about 60% of the respondents say that caring has a negative effect on their health as caregivers and that they do not feel that during COVID-19 they have been well valued by society. The pandemic has had the greatest negative effect on the following for the European carers. Social life and participation, quality of life, physical and mental well-being, and of course access to health and social services. Also, they have witnessed and they have confronted an increase in the amount of medical and emotional support offered to the care, uh, to the carers, to the persons who need caretaking. And also, it was really a hot issue and topic in caregiving that they needed to use smartphones, social media, computers, tablets, extensively, all around the clock, I would say. Due to the uh, COVID-19 outbreak, 20% of carers in Europe lost their jobs or had had their working hours cut down 
and also with this their income income also decreased um, let me share with you some of the data from Romania uh, as we have an uh, application for distress screening and management it's called the EPSCO app this EPSCO application is actually the first emotion thermometer tool based computerized to automated distress screening instrument for cancer patients, carers and professionals, so three users category. And this evidence-based tool serves as a self-directed screening, monitoring and management uh, tool and also a resource finding tool. So four things. Promoting self-managed care is part of our ongoing capacity building efforts here in Romania. So the EBSCO app actually is based on the Emotion Thermometer tool, which was created by Alex Mitchell in United Kingdom. It is a simple and very quick, very rapid screening for the detection and monitoring of emotional distress in clinical practice. It is much like the distress thermometer, but with superior accuracy. And it actually has five visual scales, distress, anxiety, depression, anger, and need for help. Please follow the link emotionthermometers.com to see more about the distress screening and uh, monitoring instrument. We see from the results that we uh, uh, take into account from carers, uh, we had more than 30 pints 35 sorry percent of our users carers so we, we see from these results that almost all of the values uh, are you know close to the cut value of high level four or higher than this so we have used fixed cutoff points of zero two three uh, four low levels on all thermometers and four to ten points for the high level category on all or any thermometers. As you can see for distress, we have 4.53 for anxiety, we have four points. For depression, we have 3.41. For anger, we have 3.92. And for need for help, we have 3.93. So these are very important uh, um, psychosocial burdens for the distress categories that we have screened. When we put them in a low and high categories, as we just presented from the cut values, we can see that actually for cancer caregivers in Romania, 60% actually said that they have high level of distress. More than 50%, 53%, 0.75 said that they have high anxiety levels. Also, high depression is uh, present in more than 40% of them. And around 50% of them reported high anger category. Also, for the need of help, we have around um, 50%, 48.5%. And from the list of problems, um, we have um, selected three uh, core needs, financial needs, insurance needs, sexual needs, and also spiritual or religious concerns. We can see that more than 20%, almost 23% of the carers for cancer patients in Romania report financial and insurance issues needs in the last days, week. Also, around 17% report sexual issues and problems, and around the same percentage of spiritual burdens and concerns. So, we really need to take uh, into uh, uh, our perspective, our professional perspective, all the resources that can help us with taking care of the caretaker. And now, uh, I'm going to share with you some of the new approaches on supporting carers. First of all, I would kindly remind you to use instruments for screening and for assessment 
of the distress and of the needs that you know carers are going through or they are experiencing during the COVID-19. So one of them could be the COVID-19 family stressor scale, which you can find it on the um, whole family lab uh, from Canada. So uh, I would say it's a very important instrument to use nowadays. And I just, as I just mentioned, although three out of four carers have never used modern technology like smartphones and Zoom and so on, according to Eurocarers, uh, they uh, actually would uh, be very um, well off. It would be very beneficial to use uh, this kind of uh, technologies because care, care, carer support programs using technology-based approaches such as video conferencing, for example, can make distanced caregivers feel less depressed, uh, feel less distressed, nervous and upset. So what we can see from a very important study published in 2020 uh, from United States is that between the baseline and after four months, participants, carers, recorded lower levels of anxiety and depression when using the video conferencing instrument. It is um, the difference is between you know, 19% and 24%. Also, new studies are demonstrating uh, the benefit of moving care delivery uh, towards a person and family-centered principle, because that is actually one of the patient's preferences. And also, it's very, very important that this kind of moving delivery toward this family and person and family perspective legitimize care partner contributions. And also, uh, they um, make sure to have access to appropriate information, um, uh, which are very you know, critical and integral to uh, high-quality cancer care. One of the issues in this sense is, uh, you know, the grief issues and the burden services for cancer caregivers during the COVID-19 times. So here you can see some of the preventive and some of the uh, therapeutic measures that you can use. So I kindly ask you to take a closer look uh, on the slides. Moving on um, uh, uh, and talking about new approaches and supporting carers, I can say that uh, one of the uh, instrument boxes or strategies that we could use based on the research is the 7S strategy. Stuff, space, skills, stuff, social media, sensitization and self-care. So uh, that's very important. Uh, to have the caregivers uh, approached in a holistic manner, which consists of social support, economic support, psychological support, support for symptom management of the patients, and also support for you know, self-caring, for protecting themselves, also including from the COVID-19 infection. So information as power it's still very important and caregivers need to be well educated about their responsibilities, their needs and uh, also the possible resources to fulfill uh, these needs. Please do not forget about the policy initiatives uh, which continue to be very important for caregivers post-COVID as well. Uh, uh, supporting caregivers all around the world, and especially in the European context, is a community effort. And its importance should not be forgotten post-COVID. For example, one of the most important and uh, 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 crucial policy initiatives in this area is that employed uh, unpaid carers with conflicting demands between working and caretaking should be helped with the national legislation to recognize and support informal carers, as it is also recommended by the Eurocarers group. Thank you so very much for your kind attention. And let me tell you that uh, I would be more than happy to connect and uh, to uh, share uh, information and strategies uh, regarding the well-being of carers 
and also of the persons affected by cancer. So thank you very much once again.